Hi guys, this is Dr. Prajana. I hope you guys are doing well. Like always, it's such an honor to connect with you. Today, I want to talk about when to say something to your in-laws and when not to. When to say something to your in-laws and when not to. I'm sure many of you have experienced this like, oh my goodness, I cannot deal with this. Oh my goodness, they're coming to visit. <laughs> so what do you do, right? So when... Again, when to say something to your in-laws and when not to. So, unfortunately, it's one of those relationships that we sometimes have to make some compromises and it's not always easy. It's not always easy, right? It's, it's an interesting one, right? And I'm sure many of you can relate. It's an interesting one. A lot of us become passive aggressive when it uh, when it's hard for us to be vocal, right? So either become too passive and we don't vocalize any of our needs, or we just become extremely vocal in an aggressive manner. So what's the balance? What do we do? Number one, base the goal is to learn to be vocal without getting uptight. Learn to be vocal without getting uptight and be vocal when it's actually happening. So at the moment when, let's say, a boundary is being crossed, that's when you want to be vocal. Say something. Like, oh, I really feel uncomfortable with this. Please, this is an important value to me. Right? At the moment. It, it's, it can be a simple matter of the in-laws not knowing certain dynamics, certain things that are important to you. Sometimes it can be their selfish characteristics, or their programmings. So again, if it's crossing a boundary, if it's important to you as a daughter-in-law or a son-in-law, you can say something at the moment without getting uptight, vocalizing your needs. Again, but you have to work on yourself and see, wait, do I become passive aggressive when it's hard for me to become be, vo be vocal? How can I be vocal without getting passive or aggressive, right? I, this, my needs do matter. My feelings do matter. So yes, I'm going to be vocal right there and then. Sometimes also you have to realize that these situations occur because it's your spouse's lack of ability to stand up to his or her parents, right? For whatever reason, whatever dynamics that they have or unhealed trauma or just whatever relationships that have been set before you even enter this pic in the picture, right? So there's a, th those could be, there can be various reasons. So when do you not say something? If the time passed, don't say anything. If, if the time passed, wait for the next moment it occurs again. Right? It's about overcoming. It's about having that mentality of, okay, wait, all right, okay, I learned from this experience. It happened, it, it annoyed me, it frustrated me, right? Processing those emotions, if you need to process it with a therapist, process it as many times you need to, right? And then you want to have that mentality of, I want another try at this, at this, because it will make me stronger. And don't think that you won't have another, another moment, another shot at this. You will, right? Trust me, you will get your chance to speak up. But don't let it consume you. Don't think that it takes anything away from you, right? Because you're still that amazing person you are. You st it, this doesn't take anything away from you, okay? So again, when to say something and when not to say something. And then working on your, be on your own behaviors of weight, your skills of vocalizing your needs. That's something that you have to work on. There's certain things other people need to work on, but wait, ask yourself, what do I need to work on, right? And then take the necessary actions. All right, guys, I hope this was helpful. See you soon. Bye.